We're here today to talk more about home security. And this is intended to be a continuation of two earlier videos, one about garage security and one mostly about door security. Uh, and I will put links to those in the description below. But to summarize in each, I use this uh, bear analogy. There's an old joke that if you go hiking with your friends and you come upon a grizzly bear, you don't need to outrun the grizzly bear, you just need to outrun your friends. And when it comes to home security, one of the keys is that you don't have to make your house into an impenetrable fortress. You just have to make your house less attractive to a burglar than that of your neighbors. In the past videos, we talked about how to secure your garage, how your locks, especially on your sliding door and potentially your deadbolt bolts might be inadequate, um, the desirability of installing a wrought iron door on your front or main entry doors, um, the importance of keeping your house in a neat and occupied uh, appearance, um, and today we're moving on to exterior lighting, interior lighting and sound, with and a bonus uh, tip about inexpensive motion detectors, how you might use them to protect your house. The very first DIY project I did on my very first house was installing an exterior light. And I'll tell you the truth, I was nervous. I was reading the instructions carefully. Uh, I was yelling at a friend who was helping, don't interrupt me, I might burn the house down. And I think caution around electric is good, um, but I don't think you should fear electric if you haven't dealt with it. Wiring in a light is a fairly easy thing. Um, perhaps wiring in a uh, electric eye, um, day-night sensor uh, might be a little bit more difficult, and wiring in new switches might not be something you've done before. But I'd like to share with you a little bit of my approach to electricity. Uh, I kind of just see it as water flowing. Water flows in and flows back. When you wire a switch, you are effectively interrupting the supply of power um, to any kind of fixture. The switch connects and disconnects. The most simple kind of switch goes right into the wiring and you toggle it to connect or disconnect. When you do an electric eye, it, it serves in exactly the same way, connects and disconnects. And when you do a fancy fixture, uh, like a timer that uh, adjusts uh, with the seasons and so forth, it does exactly the same thing, connects and disconnects. I encourage you not to be afraid to take on issues of dealing with electric, uh, especially when you follow the manufacturer's instructions carefully. One simple and inexpensive tool you might want to consider if you're doing electrical work is an electrical tester. You can use it to verify if the electric is on or off before you get to work on your DIY project. This can also be useful locating wires in the wall. It has a varying degree of sensitivity. Remember, none of this is rocket science. You are able to learn everything that you need to do to maintain the safety of your home. The simplest security lights that you can use just wire straight in as a replacement of the old fixture, but include an electric eye so that they come on at night and go off in the day. You don't have to worry about them when you're traveling out of town. Simulating nightfall. Similar to the day-night fixture we looked at before, this one has easy installation, but much more sophisticated function. It can be a motion detector alone, but I have it running with a day-night feature, so it comes on at night, but it also has a high-low function, so that if motion comes by, it goes from a low light status to a bright light status. This is an LED 
light, probably about 22 watts. In the old days, these were halogen and would have run 150 to 300 watts and would not have been affordable for running all night long. LEDs have made exterior lighting much more affordable. This setup is quite a bit fancier, probably not basic DIY. It's a switch box with an electric eye that runs to a remote location. These electric eyes cost somewhere between $10 and $20. Um, I found them to be very reliable. They tend to last uh, one to five years uh, before they burn out. I have found that it's best to wire them into the top of the box so that water doesn't get into them. This remote light fixture serves a dual function. It shines on the house and improves home security. Additionally, at one point, teens would gather on the other side of this wall at night. With the light installed, they have found another place to meet. This exterior light similarly has a day-night sensor wired right into the light. These recessed exterior lights are very difficult to put a day-night sensor on, but you can wire in a timer that works just as well, and it's actually easier to install. These wall light timers are one of my favorite tricks. I use them for the recessed lights on my house. They're also good if you have a light in a dark porch area uh, or a dark entry to your home. I use them timed to come on at dusk and to go off at sunrise. And they adjust on a daily basis um, so that as the sun rises and sets at different times, they adjust to those times. They'll come on at 4.50 p.m. in the winter, 8.30 p.m. in the summer, and no adjustment is necessary. The buttons are awfully small. When I program it, I use a pencil tip. The instructions can be a little bit complex, but there are infinite variations of how you can adjust these. They can be adjusted to come on at different times, seven days a week, to come in off and on multiple times. Um, and uh, they have all the variation to keep a teenager happy. A neighbor who did not understand this trick hired an electrician who installed an exterior electrical box, put in an electric eye, and charged her probably about $300. With this knowledge, she could have done it herself for one-tenth of the cost. You have that knowledge now. And here's a bonus tip. This little alcove is the only hidden and easy access to my backyard. I've installed these inexpensive sending units outside with one receiver in the garage so people who walk into this area hear it and one receiver upstairs so I hear it. There's a second unit inside the gate in case somebody does get in that there's double insurance that I hear them. And in fact, it works. My neighbor tells me that the other day a homeless person came over, came to this gate and walked away when the alarm bell rang. You should not only pay attention to exterior lighting to make your house appear occupied and unfriendly to burglars, but interior lighting as well. I am shocked about how many of my neighbors go away and leave no interior lights on whatsoever. One of the simplest and least expensive ways you can protect your home is to have lights going on and off inside throughout the night. I will sometimes have two investment properties plus my primary residence going at the same time, and I have a large number of these inexpensive timers that I use inside the house. They cost five to ten dollars each and are incredibly simply to operate. You just push in a tab to turn the electrical fixture on and off and you set the time, plug it in and go. They do make a little bit of noise, but you're not going to be home anyway, so it really doesn't matter. I found them to be incredibly simplistic to operate and incredibly reliable. I run five timers at a time in my primary residence when I'm gone. Lights are not the only thing you should pay attention to. You should pay attention to sound. And sound creates the image that there's somebody home. I have an inexpensive and a little bit painty uh, old portable stereo that I plug into a timer near the front door 
I play a talk radio so it's ambiguous as to whether it's radio or television, and I play it at a loud enough level that it's clearly audible outside of the door. One might imagine that most burglaries happen at night. However, in my neighborhood, more burglaries happen in the day. People are not home, and the homes are more accessible to the burglars. Thinking about this, I, I put a no solicitor sign on my door, uh, which tends to indicate I would not answer the door whether or not I was home. And then I turn this radio up very loud when I'm not home uh, to give an excuse as to why I may not hear the doorbell or I may not answer the door. I'm just trying to create uncertainty in the mind of the burglar so that he or she goes to another house and does not go to mine. Today's video is focused mostly on interior lighting, exterior lighting, and using uh, inexpensive motion detectors um, to dissuade burglars from choosing your home to burglar. In the broader context, the goal is to make your house less attractive to burglars than other homes in your neighborhood. I do want to cover a few more things as we come to the end. The first is a question for you about how long these videos should be. Um, I am a technological dinosaur. I am uh, playing with these YouTube videos um, to learn about something new and, and maybe to share some information I have. Um, my guess is somewhere between three and 10 minutes is the right timing. If you have any suggestions for me, uh, please leave them in the comments. The second is to clarify that I get nothing uh, for doing these videos. Uh, I've noticed that when a video um, goes over 100 views, YouTube starts putting ads on there. I would love it if I get, get those ads off. Uh, I don't know how to do it, um, but YouTube may make revenue on these uh, videos, um, but I do not. Next. The DIY videos um, have been fun and I've got a very gratifying response. More people have watched those than anything else I've done. But I don't believe that DIY is my top skill or my top interest. Um, I, I think it might be more valuable if I give uh, an overview of real estate investing, things like uh, where you get the money from, tax consequences of the earnings and so forth. I have an interest in consumer issues. Uh, hopefully I have an upcoming video that says, is a Costco membership worth it? Uh, and other fun issues like that. I'd like to return to doing videos about my passion for hiking. Uh, and I'm hoping to do, to think, and to learn about the process of aging and make some videos where I make comments uh, about the aging process. So let me know if any of these things interest you, uh, any input for me. Uh, I would very much appreciate it. And once again, thanks for watching this video.